Scuttlebush. We spotted some wild Pokemon in their natural habitat. Let's catch them all. Yeah. Yeah. The materials that you're going to need to make a Pokeball are, of course, the red, the black, and the white yarn. Here I have a size 4 medium weight. It's Karen Simply Soft yarn in red, black, and white. I also have stuffing to fill the Pokeball with, a size F or 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle or a yarn needle to sew all the pieces together. All right, we start with the white yarn, and I provide myself enough slack for a marker tail for each of my rows. If you have those little plastic mark, uh, row markers or use a paper clip, you can do that too. I just don't, so I use the tail as a row marker. Okay, so I'm going to give myself about four inches slack here, and I'm going to put my slip knot right about there. All right. Insert your hook. Okay, you are going to be working in rounds. So you can either start with a chain two or start with a magic ring. I prefer the chain two method. So one, two, grab some yarn. Round one, you're going to put six single crochets in that first chain. Six. All right, we're going to grab our marker tail, yarn over, and pull that through our loop, indicating we have reached the end of round one. Now we are not going to slip stitch and chain one. I'm going to work in continuous rounds. So in round two, you're going to increase or put two single crochets in each space around. Now because there's six spaces, you should end round two with 12 single crochets, okay? So just go straight into the top of the first stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. There's one. In the same space, I'm going to pull through, yarn over, and there you go. Two single crochets in the first space. So I'll meet you at the end of round two with 12 single crochets. Eleven and twelve. We've reached the end. Take our marker tail, yarn over, and pull through. We are now at round uh, round three. If you haven't noticed yet, using the size F or three point seven five millimeter crochet hook, it's a smaller hook, and it causes the loops to be smaller. We want all of our stitches to be on the tight end. Tight enough where you can get your crochet hook into the round. Not so tight where you are struggling to get your crochet hook in and out of loops. But you definitely want your stitches on the tighter end because we are making a stuffed toy. If your stitches are on the looser end, then the stuffing will show through each one of these spaces and it will look a bit sloppy it will just look undone in a way so try to go on the tighter end that way all the stitches are tight everything is uniform and all the stuffing will remain on the inside of the stuffed animal and invisible so in round three we're going to increase or put two single crochets in the first space and then we're going to put one single crochet in the second space and then repeat that pattern. Two single crochets, one single crochet. Two single crochets, one single crochet. You should end round three with 18 single crochets. Okay, so in that first space, we're gonna put two, one, two. Next space, we're gonna put one, one, and then two, one, two, and then one.
18. Reach to the end, yarning over our tail, pulling that through, indicating round three is done. Okay, round four, we're going to increase in the first space or put two single crochets in the first space and then single crocheting in the next two spaces. So we'll put two, one, one, two, one, one, and then repeat that pattern all the way around. You are going to end round four with 24 single crochets. So first space, we put two, one, two, and then one, one. And then two, and then one, one. Two, twenty three, twenty four. Looks great. Okay, yarning over that tail, pulling it through that loop. And we are on round five. Round five, we're going to increase or put two single crochets in that first space and then single crochet in the next three spaces. So two, one, 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 two, one, one, one. That's the repeating pattern. We are going to end row five with 30 single crochets. So two in the first, one, two, and then one, one, one. And 30. Take your marker tail, yarn over, pull that through. We are now on row six, round six. Round six, round seven, and round eight is just one single crochet in each space all the way around. So each round will still continue to have 30 single crochets in each round. So I will meet you at the end of round eight where we can move on to the next color. All right, I will see you at the end of round eight. All right, we have reached the end of round eight. Go ahead and take your marker tail, yarn over, pull that through your loop. We're going to slip stitch in that first space. So you find the first space, put your crochet hook in, yarn over, pull through, and you're gonna pull that yarn all the way through that first loop. You're gonna grab your scissors, cut off just a, leaving just a little bit behind. You're going to take that little bit that used to be attached to the ball, yarn that over, pull that all the way through, and that just forms a slip knot. Coming from the inside of the work, from that same first space, Okay, we're gonna grab that yarn, pull it through that space. So now it's on the inside of the work. Go to the second space from the inside, grab that other yarn, pull that through to the inside of the work, pull them, turn around and tie your knot. This just makes that knot on the inside of the work where you can't see it. It's just a way of making it invisible. Great, okay, now you're gonna grab your black yarn. Tuck that in there. Grab our black yarn, okay. Apologize for it being difficult to see. I hope that it's not a big deal. We only use it for a little bit. I'm gonna slip knot. Cool. 
I am going to attach really close to where we tied that knot. So we find the top V's of our stitches. I go a little before that space. I attach on the, see the V right there? I attach to the back. I only want the back loops only. Okay? So right here is the front loop. I inserted my crochet hook in the back loop. I'm going to wrap my yarn, yarn over, pull that through, and slip stitch it. That's just attaching the black yarn to the project. Okay, I'm going to chain one. And now I'm all set up for row nine. Okay, in row nine, we're going to single crochet in each space around, but in the back loops only. So right next to the knot, it gets a little tricky. If you need a stitch count, we're still on 30. 30 stitches all the way around. So right here is the knot. So because I can't really get to a back loop, it's all right. I'm going to do the front, whatever I can get a hold of. This section right here, why I wanted to make the attached black yarn attach right here so close to where I tied the knot for the white is because I'm going to put that button over the top of it. The crochet, we're going to crochet the, the button for the pokeball and we're going to place it right over these stitches so they disappear. We don't see them. So we want all this work to be close as possible so they will all fit behind that little button that we will attach. Okay, so back loops only. And I will see you once you get to this space right here, right before we attach. All right, cool. I'll see you in a second. And last space right there perfect we are going to take that tiny little black uh, marker tail right there we're going to yarn over and pull that through our loop on our hook reinsert our hook and now we're going to go continuously we are not going to slip stitch and chain one we're going to go right straight into that next row okay and we are going to just do a regular single crochet underneath both loops all the way across. You're going to end with 30 stitches. I will see you right when we get to this marker tail and the stitch right before the marker tail. Okay. Great, last stitch of that space, making 30 single crochets all the way around. And take that marker tail, yarn over and pull through. We are going to go ahead and slip stitch on the top of the first space of that row. So yarn over, pull all the way through, and we're gonna tie off, we're done with black. Small tail, because we're done. Gonna yarn over. Pull that one through to form the knot. Gonna come in from the inside of the ball. Pull that one through. Next stitch over. Come through from the inside. Pull that one through. And we are going to tie this knot. Perfect. Go ahead and grab your red yarn. red. Right. Go that way. Go ahead and leave yourself a bit of a marker tail, thinking four inches. Go ahead and slip knot. Fantastic. We're going to again attach really close to where we put this black knot, but this time I want to go in the front loop. So find the stitch. Find the V's on the top. You're just going to go through the front V, the front stitch of that V. 
So right here is the back of that V, okay? We're going to slip stitch to attach the yarn to the project. Okay, going to chain one, and then in the front loops only of every space, we're going to single crochet, okay? What this will do, you get through a couple and you'll be able to see, this will add depth and dimension to the Pokeball. So, what you will see once you start getting that wet red all the way around, especially when we, when we go to stuff this Pokeball, is the white will be on the outside. It'll look like the black is kind of tucked into the ball. It'll have a different layer. It'll be up and then up. Oh, it's sunk in for the black and popped out for the red again, which adds a really cool detail, a really cool dimension to the Pokeball, adding to that 3D effect that I really appreciate so much about a crocheted project. All right, we've made it all the way around. Last stitch right here in the front loop. Perfect. Grabbing our marker tail, yarning over and pulling through. Okay, so we just did round 11. Round 12 and 13, we are going to single crochet underneath both loops all the way across. Okay, so I will meet you at the end of round 13. All right, we have reached the end of row 13. Go ahead and yarn over your marker tail and pull that through your loop. In round 14, we are going to decrease the first two spaces and then single crochet in the next three. So here's what that's gonna look like. You're gonna insert your crochet hook into that first space, yarn over and pull through. You now have two loops on your crochet hook. Go into the next space yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your crochet hook, one from this space and one from that space. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now you just turned two spaces into one and that's a decrease. Now we're going to single crochet in the next three spaces. So one, two, three. Perfect, decrease again. One, next space, two, three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three of those. And then one, two, three. Be cautious, keep being mindful that we need to make sure our crochet stitches are on the tight end because we're wanting to make sure that this holds its structure when we stuff it with the polyfill or whatever stuffing you are choosing to use. So I will go ahead and continue on with this pattern of decrease and then three single crochets and I will meet you at the end of this round. Okay, at the end of round 14, you will notice that I just decreased. Then there's one, two, three, and we're left with one space extra. Just go ahead and single crochet in that last space. The other rounds all have it evened out. 
just for some reason in this round we have an extra space it's not a big deal yarn over that tail pull through we are now ready for round 15 in round 15 we're going to decrease in the first two and then single crochet in the next two spaces and that's the repeating pattern so decrease and then one one so here we go insert your crochet hook into your first space yarn over pull through second space yarn over pull through decrease and then one one you will end round 15 with 18 single crochet stitches All right, go ahead and yarn that tail over, pull that through. If for some reason you do find yourself with an extra stitch at the end, just single crochet in it, it's not a big deal. At this point, we're about to enter into round 16. This is where I start to stuff my Pokeball with polyfill. So here is what I use, polyfill. It's great for stuffing pillows, dolls, stuffed toys, and crafts. It's just what I prefer, but you do not have to use polyfill. You can use whatever works best for you, whatever you like. It's just what I like. It's what I use. So you grab a bit of stuffing and go ahead and fill it into your Pokeball. Great. Now this is why we made those crochet stitches so tight is because we don't want any of this showing through. Go ahead and keep adding as much stuffing as you find appropriate. Give your, oh, I just <laughs> exploded it all out. Okay. While being able to keep all that stuffing inside, give it a squeeze. See if this is how full you want that pokeball to be okay we're going to do one more round and then we will also check to see if we want to add any more stuffing so let's go ahead and reinsert our crochet hook in round 16 we're going to decrease in the first two spaces and then single crochet in the next decrease in the first two and then one decrease one you should end round 16 with 12 single crochets, okay? So, oh, I also want you to, this is important, in this round, we're only going to do the front loops only. It's a trick that I just recently learned, so I apologize for not jumping to that in the, or right away, but in this round, round 16, we're going to just use those front loops. So if you look at the top, you see that V right there? See the Vs? We're just going to use the front one, okay, to do all of our stitches. So in this case, this decrease, just using those front loops to decrease. And in the next single crochet, we are just doing that front loop, okay? What this does is it leaves the back loop dropped behind and it fills in the space because when we decrease something so tight especially a stuffed toy that stuffing stretches those stitches and it makes those holes those gaps much wider so if we just grab that front loop leaving behind the back loop that back loop kind of acts as a little fill in it's a cool trick that i just picked up All right, reach the end, yarn over that marker tail, reinsert your crochet hook. Okay, we're about to enter our last round, round 17, where we decrease in every space around, only doing the front loop, again, to do this trick to 
have that back loop fill in the, before we do that though, I want you to give your Pokeball one more squeeze. Is that how you want your ball to feel? Okay, I like my Pokeballs to be on the firmer side so that it really holds its shape. I'm gonna make mine really full. And because my stitches are so tight, I'm not having to worry so much about the spaces ex uh, exposing the stuffing on the inside, if you can kind of see that. So round 17, front loops only, decrease all the way across. So one, two, there we go. Next, one, Two. Next. Okay, if you want, use that hook to your advantage. Really just claw in there. over pull through now if I see a significant hole on the top like that I am going to take my yarn my hook on my yarn and go through the inside of the space diagonal yarn over and slip stitch okay and that closes everything up if you can see those spaces that I did the front loop only have really come together where you don't really see the stuffing holes. Pretty cool, right? Okay, go ahead and cut that short. Yarn that over, pull it through for that knot. Go ahead and tie these two strings together a couple times really secure that knot. Okay, grab your crochet hook, insert into any random space. Go ahead and pop your hook out close to where those two strings are. Grab those with your hook and pull them through the hole. Now those strings are trapped in the stuffing inside. And go ahead and mold that ball. Kind of like Play-Doh, where you're trying to make your ball. There you go. There is the ball shape. Now we're going to make the button to put right there. So put that aside. We're going to grab our black color. Give yourself just a small two inch tail, because again, I'm doing the marker tail. We're working in rounds again, making a round button slip knot magic ring or chain two i do the chain two you're going to put eight single crochets in that first chain or inside the magic ring okay so seven and Eight. Grab your marker tail, yarn over, pull through. Again, working in continuous rounds. So we're going to put two single crochets in each space around. You should end this round, round two, with 16 single crochets. Fifteen and six. 16. Great. Yarn over, pull through, and we are going to slip stitch in that first space. So find the first space, yarn over, pull through, and pull all the way through that loop. You are done with this outer part of the button, so we are going to cut ourselves enough slack to sew this button onto the Pokeball. Okay? 
yarn over and pull through that loop to create your knot. Come in the first space from the back and pull that through. Next space over, come in through the back. Grab that tail, pull that behind. If you do not do this, then your work will stick out the bottom and create this line on the pokeball when you go to sew it in. And it's just a very obvious thing. And I try to hide those little things, not make it so bluntly obvious. So I tuck the yarn behind the work. So hopefully it just camouflages in. Okay, there is our outer button. Now grab your white. We're gonna make the inside of the button. Okay, give yourself just a two inch tail again. We're making a round, but it's a much smaller round, maybe an inch and a half tail. Cool. Chain two or magic ring. Eight single crochet in that first chain or inside your magic ring. Eight, perfect. Grab your marker tail, pull it through. You are now going to put your crochet hook into the loop. Slip stitch into the first space, insert, pull through and all the way through. You are done. That is all there is to the inner button, but we wanna make sure we cut enough slack to sew this inner button onto the work. Yarn over, pull that through and come in from the back of that same stitch. Grab that yarn, pull it to the back. Next space over, pull the marker tail through. Make this tight and go ahead and tie that in a knot. Perfect. We are now going to sew the inner button onto the outer side of the button. So I will cut this marker tail really short so when I sew this on I can just tuck that behind grab your yarn needle or your tapestry needle great and grab the outer part of the button put it in the center now because I tied that knot behind the work I can just come in from behind and slip the needle into black part and it just disappeared right behind looks really clean looks real good make sure that little tiny marker tail is behind the work and going to sew on the inside of these stitches do not go out and then in out and then in don't do that it ruins the that illusion of three dimensions okay so I'll insert right there working the stitches on the inside of the work. Great, we've made it all the way around. Perfect. Now I'm going to take this yarn and I'm going to take the black marker tail and I'm just going to sew them or tie them in a knot together. Just again, wanting to make sure everything stays put and is as secure as possible. Super important. Great. Go ahead and take those two. We're going to uh, cut those short so that they will tuck behind this section when we sew this to our Pokeball. So going ahead and threading the needle. Perfect. We're going to place this button over those color change sections. And you can usually find these if you look for the tail marker on the work just follow it up tail marker on the work follow it down and right there 
is where we need to place our button. Because I tied the knot behind the work, all I have to do is insert the needle behind the work. And again, we won't have that sewing thread popping from the side being extremely obvious. When I sew back into the work, I'm going to be sewing from the inside. You do not want to go around. You want to be on the inside. Puncture in the next to the hole from the inside. Go through it and grab your space just like that. This again helps with that whole three dimensional look that just looks really good. All right, guys, I have made it all the way around. Before I tie this one off, I'm going to go and I'm going to just separate this button from the rest of the Pokeball and then flatten it out. And I'm going to make sure it looks rounded and shape it. I'm gonna go to the center button just pinch it, make it round, really shape that too. Make sure it's exactly what I want. I see a little bit of that tail that came through. It's not a big deal. I can just take my scissors and remove that. But all in all, that button looks pretty good to me. So I will lift up that side and I will attach my needle through the hook or through the project just like that. Pull it through, but hold, I'm going to pinch this little bit. I'm going to take it and I'm going to twist it. Take my needle on the inside of that twist and slowly pull it. And that just made a slip knot. Perfect. Insert my needle again through the entire work, just like that. And pull it through. Grab my scissors, cut that slack off. And there you go, guys. There is your Pokeball. And it looks incredible. Kids love these things. You did an amazing job. Proud of you, man. Make tons of these. Cool. Good job. All right. So I caught Bulbasaur. I caught Charmander and I caught Evie. I hope that you had a great time making your Pokeball with us. I hope you have fun playing with them. We all had a great time. Please, if you had fun, give my video a like. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel because I have a lot more fun crochet things on the way. Well, I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you had a lot of fun. We will see you next time with another amazing video. Goodbye. Bye.